Jesus' name we worship. Father, we thank you because you are worthy of our worship. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and mercy upon our lives. We thank you for making it possible for us to worship you this morning. It is not by power. It is not by mind. It's your grace and mercy upon our lives. Lord God, the time has come for you to speak to us. We prepare our hearts to receive from you. Speak from your throne of grace. Bless us from above. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen? Please be seated. The title of our sermon this morning is Extraordinary Commitment. Extraordinary Commitment. God requires us to be totally committed to him. You know the Bible tells us that God is a jealous God. God does not like half commitment. He wants us to be fully committed to him. Because if we are committed to him, we will serve him. If we are committed to him, we will obey him. If we are committed to him, we will live according to his word. If we are committed to him, we will give up our own agendas. You know, one of the greatest problems we have in this life is that we have our own agendas. And that agenda <laughs> may not even be the agenda of God, but that's not even the issue. At times, the agenda we are not suited for it. I don't know whether you understand. Your composition, your talents, your skills, your circumstances of birth, everything, your calling is not suited for that agenda. But that is your own personal uh, agenda. And so you see many people, they are healthy. Huh? They can come to church this morning. They can worship God beautifully as we have done. Yet yeah, they are not happy with themselves. Because they have another agenda personal agenda that they think God has not made it to happen in their lives. But what God wants from us is to be committed to him. And he has promised to reward all those that are committed to him. And you know our God is not a liar. He doesn't deceive people. And he doesn't say what he cannot do. And we know that there is nothing that he cannot do. So, if God promised you a thing, and that thing is not happening, is it that God cannot do it? No. The most important thing God wants from us is commitment. And that is why our passage this morning, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, says, And thou shalt love the God, the Lord thy God, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. That we should love God with all our heart. We have always emphasized that everything starts from where? From the heart. 
Love the God, the Lord your God, with all your heart and with all your soul. You remember our media revival talked about the three parts of the body the spirit, the soul, and the body. So the soul. It's where you have consciousness. It's where you have emotions. It's where you have thinking. So, all your thinking should be committed to God. All your emotions should be directed to God. Everything about you should be about God. He says, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might, all your strength to love God. And when the disciples of Jesus Christ asked him in Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 to 37, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law, which is the greatest commandment in the law, you know, that question itself is also typical of human beings. Hmm? The laws are too many. Just give us a one, the greatest one. You know, in when you want to develop a country, or if you go to the media, they will ask you, or oh, you have a new government. People we want to focus on. What is the one thing that the Tinubu government will do and everybody will be happy? Or they will tell you two or three things. What should, be the, what should they focus on? If you go to media, that is what the question they will ask you. And human beings are like that. You know, this life is complex. And there are several dimensions. So, to develop a country, to run a country, there is no one thing that you focus on and things will be okay. You can't do security and leave education. You can't do education and leave health. You can't do even all those ones and leave housing. You can't do housing and even leave order. If you have traveled to other countries of the world, you just be amazed at how disorder can create problem. You know, yesterday evening somebody came to visit me, so he wanted to go and call Uber. And then the Uber responded, he was supposed to come around 10 minutes. After like 20 minutes, he was still in the same place. We called him, he said, it's in Lokoboma traffic. You know? Everybody will do what? Put their head in discipline. And nobody can move. So, people may not put that as priority, but order. Just to bring order to society. The benefits are immense. To bring order that you know, if you go to other countries, you, you know, as a Nigerian, you will just be shocked. Because you will go to a four-road junction. People are coming, you know, vehicles are moving, but it will be completely empty. The person coming from this side will reach there. In fact, in some of the cases, no traffic light. 
We read there and stop. And look who came before him. And people will just be going one after the other. Here in Nigeria, everybody will do what? Put it. So maybe the disciples thought that the laws are too many. Say, look, what? Which one of them is the greatest? So that we just obey the greatest one. And Jesus Christ told them that thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Do you know what that means? Hmm? If you do that, <laughs> you obey all the others. Because if you love the go God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul, you will worship him. If you love him, you will serve him. If you love him, you will love his creation. So you will love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you will not steal from your neighbor. You will not gossip against your neighbor. You will not backbite your neighbor. So, commitment to God is like the omnibus commitment. But it's a tough command. Because how can you love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength, 24 hours every day? This is impossible with man in a fallen state. Because the nature of man is to be selfish. That is the nature. The Adamic nature of man. If you want to do an experiment, test it with small children. Call a small child, give the child a packet of uh, biscuit. Eh? And after I give you, say, okay, give me one. Say, Who taught that child? Who taught that child not to give? But you know, and you know, that's why I always say that. You know, God is just wonderful. And he made people in different ways. If you bring two children, you give them the two of them biscuit. You can ask one, he will do like this. You can ask the other one, he will give you everything. How do you explain that? How do you explain that? And two of them have the same parents. So it's not that they saw the wickedness of their parents. Because many of us, that's what we think. At times, when you see a child that is wicked, you say it's what their parents to them. But two children from the same parents behaving quite differently. That's why. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, from verse 1 to 2, I beseech you, burden, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That he may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, two key things from those two verses. One, present your body. Present everything you have to God. If you present your body to God, it will not be difficult for you to give offering. If you present your body to God, you will look that 10% is too much. If you present your body to God. But you know, presenting your body, if you present your Adamic body to God, 
you cannot be totally committed to God. That's why the second passage says, you renew your mind. He said, be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hello, are we together? Because if it is your natural man that you are presenting to God, there will be challenge. Because the natural man cannot be totally and fully committed to God. It's only the renewed man, the transformed man. That's why there is a book called Transform Temperament by Tim Lahai. Which tells us that look, every human being has different temperament. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can help to do all to transform you. So that it will strengthen those strengths you have and overcome those weaknesses. Because every human being, the natural Adamic man, has some strengths. And they have some weaknesses. And I want to challenge you this morning. Don't exaggerate or celebrate your weaknesses. I don't know that you understand that. Don't celebrate your weaknesses. Uh, you know, saying that's so I do. Eh? Have you seen people say that? Say, you know, say me are the quick vessel. So, if you quit, you should be ashamed of yourself. Because to a quick verse is not one of the fruits of the spirit. So, don't say it with pride. That you know me. Say at the quick uh, verse. It's not a virtue. It's not something to be proud of. It's not something to celebrate. If you know, say you the quick verse, when something, when verse you they come, what you go do? Say, Holy Spirit, help me. So, what is the proper response required of you? Number one is that you offer yourself. As a living sacrifice. What does that mean? It means that you should offer your bodies. You know one of the greatest apostles in the scripture is uh, Apostle Paul. And if you look at it. Apostle Paul was flogged. You know people. Karek begin flogging. Not because he's still old. Because of the gospel. You know. But Apostle Paul himself, apart from people who flogged him, he said, I flogged my body. He said, I beat my body and put it into subjection. So, some version said, I pummel my body. You know this body? Huh? Eh? This body is a slave. It's what you give to him that he does. You know, people have sleeping pattern. Sleeping pattern is what you give to your body. If all your life you sleep 12 hours a day, any day you sleep 6 hours, you will have headache. That's how the body is. If you say, look, every 12 midnight, you set your alarm to pray for one hour. By the time you do it for five years, alarm no go read before you awake. No, no, I don't, exactly, for two weeks. You do it two weeks, the alarm no go ring before you wake. If you have fasted 
for 21 days. Eh? The 22nd day, you know why it? This body, you can subject it. Don't let your body rule over you. Don't let the desires of the flesh rule over you. You can subdue it. Number two, should be a servant and slave to Jesus. If you look at all these uh, passages here, Romans chapter 1 verse 1, Philippians chapter 1 verse 1, Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 1, Philemon verse 1. You see Paul himself describing himself. See Paul is servant of Jesus Christ. In, in one of the verses, he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. In one of the verses, he says, Paul, a slave to Jesus Christ. In fact, in one, he said, Paul, one of the versions say, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. You know? Who is describing Paul? Himself. If you are asked to describe yourself, what will you describe yourself? Can you describe yourself as a servant of Jesus? Can you describe yourself as a slave? You know what a slave is? A slave has no right of his own. It's what the master says. Because when we say I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, the meaning is that you become what? A slave. You become a slave to Jesus. So, you don't longer have your own agenda. It's what Jesus wants to, you to do. That is what you do. Number three is to serve. In Luke chapter 17, verse 7 to 10, and Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 to 4. Let's read Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 to 4. He says, do nothing out of... No. Philippians, please, can you go back to air? Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. He said, do nothing out of a selfish ambition. You know, like we said earlier, every human being is always selfish to some extent. The Bible is admonishing us that we should not do anything at all out of selfish ambition. If you want to worship God, eh? it's not to worship God so that you will be recognized. That is selfish eh? ambition. You want to have a relationship with people, don't calculate what you want to gain. That is selfish eh? ambition. Even if you want a position, don't want the position because of what you will gain from that position. But of the service that you will render. You know, that is the problem with uh, politics in our country. Only few people want a position because they want to serve. Majority of people one position because of what they can get. And the Bible says, don't be like that. Not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. Hello? How? Is that not a difficult uh, injunction? That you should not look for your own interests. Look for the interests of others. One of the ways you can look at this is to look at people serving food. Eh? When you get people to serve food, packed food, 
You know, at times, they will start to save. Start to save. Start to save. Start to save. And then, they look what he remain. Look the people when they the audience. What did I go do? He said, I beg. <laughs> sister, <laughs> sister, I mean, I beg. Keep this one for me. Now, he's a, what he's doing is what? Service. -o. But not look to the. In fact, even some, they will see that the thing won't uh, go around. But they will keep more than one for themselves first. But they know, they've seen the, they've gauged the population. So, the Bible says you should look to the interests of all others. In fact, if you use this system in your home, between husband and wife, there will be hardly be any problem. If you look to the any matter, any situation at all, you say, what is the interest of my husband? What is the interest of my wife? As he's looking to your interest, you are looking, there will be no trouble. But, you know, in the house, one day it just happens, say, no meat in the house again, only one egg. In many homes, what will happen? Yeah. And the husband, he knows that it's only one egg remaining. You know? eh? He will just look as if he knows here, say, now only one uh, egg remaining. He will just chop a uh, clean man. But even one egg can be shared. Can be shared. Look to the interest of others. To the interest of others. Don't be selfish. And you know, one, one of the things I found in this life is that what you help to make happen to others, God help to make it happen to you. It may not be those people you did for, but God will make others. In fact, in, in this preparation for my sister's birthday, I've been amazed. You know, we have a small planning committee that is planning for it. And I told them, I said, look, oh, there is a book which has been written on me, which will be out that day. But I said, look, I don't want lunching. I don't want to ask people to donate. Just come and help me thank God. But just the mere invitation letter. People are saying, ah, you want to present a book? I will not be around. Take this. In fact, one of them was so, it's not somebody that, you know, I've been even very close to, even though we know ourselves for many years. So what I'm trying to say is that look out for the interests of uh, others. God will look out for your own uh, interests. And it's not the person that you are looking out for his interests. That will look out for your interest. Number four, obey God. Obey God. In First John chapter five, verse three and eighteen, he says, "In fact, this is the law for God: keep His commands." He says, if you, "Because you know, we are saying the Bible says, love the Lord your God." That if you love God, you will do what? He will keep his commandments. You can't love God and disobey his commandments. And I like this. And I want to emphasize this. You see, and his commands are what? Not burdensome. What does that mean? His commands are not burdensome. 
You know, I emphasize this every time. That Christianity is not punishment. Huh? The laws of God, the commandments of God are not burdensome. It's not to put wahala on your head. That because I'm a Christian, because I will obey God, now I live a very dull life. I live a very terrible life. I live a very uninspiring life. I live an unhappy life. I cannot catch groove. I don't know what I know. You understand what I'm saying? No, that's not the purpose. The thing is that when your mind is renewed, when you are transformed, eh? your definition of groove will change. So, when people cash their groove, because when you cash groove, you become happy, is it not? You cash your groove during praise worship. It's the same groove. People cash their groove drinking alcohol. You cash your groove with malt and pepper soup. It's the same groove. What is the essence of groove? Enjoyment. <laughs> but God will change your... In fact, when you see people saying they are casting groove, doing what you were doing before, you don't be wondering that these people are very stupid. Because your mind has been renewed. That is why this morning, one of the most important things I want to do, surrender to the Holy Spirit. Don't see when we preach every day, we are trying to put burden. No, it's not burdensome. You will see enjoy. You will see be happy. You will see crash groove. But it's a different kind of groove. But you will still be happy. That is the most important thing. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And verse 18 says, we know that anyone born of God do not continue in sin. You know? <laughs> Hello, do you believe the scriptures? What does he say? He says, we know that anyone born of God do not continue to sin. So, if you have given your life to Jesus Christ and you continue to sin, then we doubt it. Whether you have actually given your life to Jesus. The Bible says we know that anyone born of God do not continue to sin. You know, you cannot say you are born again. You continue to live a life of fornication, a life of adultery, a life of stealing, a life of backbiting, a life of gossip. And then you come to church on Sunday and say you are born again. No. The Bible says we know that any one born of God do not continue to sin. He says we know. So it's not speculation. We know that any one born of God do not continue to sin. Ask your neighbor, are you born of God? I won't ask you the, you yourself, ask yourself the second part. Do, do you continue to sin? Because if you continue to sin, then you are not a born of God. And you know what it sin is? He said, the one who was born of God, keep them safe. And the evil one cannot harm them. I don't even know we human beings. The 
protection that God has given to us, why we don't embrace it? He said, the evil one, we do what? Cannot harm you. You are protected. That's why I always tell people, I say, it's the child of God. Don't live in fear. Don't live in fear. Because you are protected. You are protected by God. You know, it doesn't mean that Satan will not try. But by his grace, you are protected in Jesus' name. Amen. Give up your own agenda. Give up your own agenda. He said, we know that we are children of God and the whole world is under control of the evil. Evil one. Control of the evil one. You may have your own agenda, but give up your own agenda. Follow God's agenda. Because God's agenda is better than your own uh, agenda. You know, I said two things. One, offer yourselves as living sacrifice. That's what we'll be looking at. The second part is be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says, But uh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So, the purpose of transformation is to be like God. I don't know whether you understand that. That is a heavy statement. That the purpose, when they say renew your mind, is for you to become like God. And that's why Colossians chapter 3 verse 10 say, and put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of the creator. That's why if you have renewed your mind, eh, people do wicked things to you, you will just smile. People cannot understand. You don't take anything to heart because your image is being transformed to the image of what? Of God. So that's how you should assess yourself. You know there is spiritual assessment. You yourself can assess yourself. How do you respond to wickedness? How do you respond people targeting you? How do you respond to people doing bad against you? Compare it to how Jesus Christ responded to people who were killing him. He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they are doing. Transformation requires sacrifice. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 5, he said, put to death. He said, put to death the new and put on the new self which is being renewed in the image of his creator. So, put to death what belongs to the earthly nature. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Greed. Talking about greed. You know, if you are dealt with human beings, you will understand what greed is. You know? Even you can stimulate greed. Huh? You know, like you are living in your compound. And you see somebody in the next compound. And you, you live there for 10 years. You just greet each other. But you see the person. And one day, God just ministers to you. He says, bless this person. And you call the person and say, come. Uh, God has laid in my heart to give, give you something. And you give the person 20,000 naira. Hmm? You've lived with him for 
10 years old. You know, some of them are just wonderful people. After you've given that 20,000 naira, month never finished. You have no end new salary. He will just come and meet you one day and say, I enter trouble. I don't know whether you understand that. Hey, he says, see, so are they stay near this man where get plenty of money? No, this I ask ourselves, he just give me 20,000. Now, nah, no, they go meet and since. So, you've not earned a new salary. You have given him 20000 For 10 years, you didn't give him anything. Eh? Then you give him 20000 Maybe on the first of the month. 20 something. Just come in to say, my wife is sick, my children are sick, I won't go to hospital. That is. How greedy. I don't know whether um, you watch some of these skits on, uh, on uh, social media. They are great illustrations. There was one man went to meet another person. So the person wanted to give him money. Dollars. So he opened the door of the car and he has money, Naira, in his uh, back pocket. So he opened the door of the car, he was collecting the dollars. And the person who he wanted to give the money now just saw Naira in his pocket. So he just put her in his pocket and collected the Naira and put it in his back pocket. Not knowing that there is another person in the car who was seeing him. So, the person, the other person now picks the naira that he put his back away from his own pocket. Then, the man who wanted to give the money came and gave him $500. Uh, so, obviously, he was happy, thank him, and he was uh, going. So, the man answered, ah, I had money in my pocket. The money is gone. Then the third person said, look, see the money. That man you gave money was the one who was uh, stealing from you. And then they drove and went to meet the man. You know? <laughs> and so the man was now, they saw him. He was now looking for the, the stolen uh, naira plus the dollar in sand. So they collected the dollars from him. That's how human beings uh, are. One of the reasons why there is a high rate of unemployment is that people who have money to establish businesses, they will not because they will steal the money. Even you, you who is here. How many of you can open a provision shop and put somebody to sell? And you are not going there? Eh? In this country? But that is how it's supposed to be. If people have money, they open business, put people there, people work, they pay their salary. At the end of the month, the people get profit. That's how uh, countries grow, businesses grow, employment will be there. But today, in Nigeria, you can only run business that you will see that there and be looking uh, at it. You run a business. What does it take you to open branches? Can you open any branch? You can't. Unless you put your wife there. You can't open branch. So greed is one of the greatest problems that is controlling us. But the admonition this morning is that do not conform to the pattern of this world. Acknowledge him in all your ways. And the almighty God will be with you in Jesus' name.
So my dear brothers and sisters, commitment requires conviction. It requires strong belief. Because it's strong belief that governs our decisions and behavior. Do you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? How are you showing your love to God? In sacrifice, in service, in obedience, and following God all the way. As you display your commitment to him, you will receive reward in this month in Jesus' name. Amen. And we can't thank God. Each day I hear testimonies. I thank God for his grace upon this commission. For the spirit of excellence. For prosperity. For progress. For healing. And for protection. My prayer is that this special anointing on our ministry will continue and all of us will experience it in Jesus' name. Amen. My prayer is that the five dimensions of our anointing, everyone here will experience it in Jesus' name. Amen. Because we serve God who is trustworthy. We serve God who is not a liar. And I want to appeal to you that be committed to this God and you will live a fulfilling life. What is important is a fulfilling life. Don't envy life of people you see. Especially media. You know? I'm sure you know. You will see somebody beat off his wife in the night. In the following day, you will put a picture on social media and say, darling, I love you. <laughs> I, I don't know whether you understand. But I'm not telling you stories. <laughs> I'm telling you things I have uh, seen. Eh? You will even, I, I don't know that you understand. You know that the bitter of this night and the following money put it on social media. So, my dear brothers and sisters, don't envy life of other people. Thank God for your life. Thank God for what God is doing in your life. And be sure, I can assure you, as you remain committed to him, as you show commitment to him, he will reward you in Jesus. That is why this morning, what we desire is not just to ask God for anything. But to tell him, God, empower me to be committed to you. Because I know that when I'm committed to you, what will happen? There will be rewards. Let's be on our feet. Do something new in my life. Something new.